Per quanto riguarda il controllo delle frontiere, invece, io vorrei ricordarvi che la Gran Bretagna ha preferito uscire dall'Europa per riuscire a gestire e controllare le frontiere. Ha preferito la via più dura, perché la gestione delle frontiere è un diritto fondamentale dei popoli e dovete capirla questa cosa. Vi ricordo che per noi la Francia non è un concetto negoziabile. Non siamo però solo noi a dirlo, dovete tenere presente le aspirazioni dei popoli, non potete negarle. Desidero sollevare poi un'altra questione, attirando la vostra attenzione proprio sull'idea di giustizia. Nelle periferie, dove ci sono un sacco di immigrati, il, la disoccupazione sta al 50%. E ora, far arrivare ancora immigrati crea una profonda ingiustizia, anche nei confronti di coloro che sono già da noi, sono immigrati, sono disoccupati, anche dopo la seconda generazione non sono riusciti ad inserirsi nella società. Queste persone oggi votano per noi. Vi consiglio di fare un giro con noi nelle periferie più difficili. Le persone di colore votano per il Front National. Cioè anche le persone di colore votano per il Front National perché c'è un problema di giustizia che non possiamo continuare a ignorare. You know, I, am, I wanted to thank the rapporteurs for the work on this, on this important report. I have to say, um, I am pretty skeptical about the tendency that the migration and asylum policies of the European Union are taking. I think it is clear after the Turkey deal, after the first new partnership framework with some African countries, and also after the proposal for the recast of the common European asylum system by the European Commission, that there is an attempt to externalize our borders and responsibilities. Which, which I think will not solve the problem, but just move it farther from our eyes and our capability to act and to um, help. There is a problem of coherence, though, colleagues, because I was in New York in September uh, when we were discussing for the first UN summit on refugees and migrants. We were dis that, that summit was organized on the, on the presumption, on the Um, on the fact that 86% of all displaced persons in the world are hosted in developing countries. So, the matter of better sharing responsibility, it's not only a European matter, of course, it's a global matter. But how can we be credible when asking globally a better sharing of responsibility if we are not capable to do it in our home, in our European Union. Have you seen the images of what's happening in Serbia, in Greece? It is obvious. I don't need the colleague of Front National to tell me that this situation is unbearable. Of course it is. For years, six member states on 28 have dealt alone with 80% of all asylum requests. Is this the ground for a sustainable European Union? It is not. Ma dove è la solidarietà e dove è l'equal share of responsibility che non sto inventando perché è ancora scritto nei nostri trattati a articoli 78 e 80? Quindi cosa stiamo parlando about? So Il problema della coerenza è anche che il collega del Front National ha detto che c'è un problema di giustizia. Ma la giustizia, credo, è un concetto che non può essere separato da diritti fondamentali. Quindi non dimentichiamo che chiedere di protezione internazionale è asking for international protection is a fundamental right, and we have to grant it if we don't want to forget the legal and also moral, let me say, responsibilities that we have in front of people fleeing wars and persecution and discrimination of all kinds. So, yes, everybody can go in the streets and foster the idea that there is an ongoing invasion in Europe. The suburbs that you mentioned, colleague, where people suffer the lack of a perspective for their future, the lack of jobs, the complete lack of the social dimension of the European Union that would help them dealing with the, their everyday problems. Who can be surprised if they are scared? But it is very responsible to blow on their fears, like some party is doing. To use migrants as a scapegoat to hide our responsibilities in not being able to create new jobs, to redistribute wealth, to put in place measures to support them against poverty. So who is to blame for this? Migrants? 
seriously. So I think it's also responsible to frame a picture that is very distant from reality. The reality is much more harsh. What are the reasons why these people are fleeing? You really want to help them in their countries? Let's stop fiscal policy of, of European companies that are using entire African countries as tax havens. Do you know that in the last 50 years, the African Union has said that African countries have lost uh, uh, nearly one trillion dollars in tax evasion and tax avoidance of our companies, not theirs. It is almost the sum that they received in terms of uh, development aid. So we are taking with one hand what we're giving with the other, basically. And also, let's stop trade deals, trade deals that have a tremendous impact on developing countries. Let's stop exploiting their natural resources. This could be a way. So, colleagues, if you're looking for the reason why people are coming to your country, you might find them much nearer than you thought.